Okay, now the motion that we're describing here, if this is the origin and this is the x direction and the y direction, so I'm looking in the y direction, I step over two units, don't want to go too far, let's say that's two units in the x direction and on this picture it's like I'm here. And I'm going to move forward in the y direction and start making the ellipse. Now, by the time t goes from 0 to pi over 4, and pi over 4 is about 0.8 seconds, about the time it takes me to make a step, I will have come around here and curved. So now I'm pointing not in the positive y direction, but over this way a little bit, mimicking this vector the way the v vector is turned. So this is my direction. If I'm looking straight ahead in my direction of motion, the direction of the v vector, the approximately 120 degree direction with the positive x direction. Positive x direction is, gee, I can't do, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat. Positive x direction is like here. To come around to my direction at this point, I've got to move through the 180 degrees over to about 120 degrees. So I'm pointing here. Now my acceleration vector, um, my acceleration vector is either speeding me up or slowing me down and it's also changing my direction. So there's a component to the acceleration in this direction. If I'm speeding up, we'll have a component in my direction of motion. If I'm slowing down, we'll have a component opposed to my direction of motion. Okay? The component of the acceleration vector in my direction of motion is what speeds me up. If it's positive, it slows me down. If it's negative. So here we have acceleration vector, which I've drawn like this, and this might or might not be accurate. Uh, and it's got a component in this direction and a component in this direction. Now the component perpendicular to my motion is what changes my direction, because my direction is always changing as I move around the circle. It'll go through, my direction will go through 360 degrees before I get back to here. And you want to visualize that. You want to visualize what it means to have components of the acceleration vector. And, of course, we're going to learn here in a minute how to calculate those components. <coughs> okay. Now, in order to calculate those components, we have to be able to do a projection of one vector on another. And this is something that, you know, everybody in the class has had linear algebra, and it's been a year for a lot of them, and a lot of them say, oh, okay, it's coming back, it's coming back. They've seen it. They were in my linear algebra class, so I know they've seen it. Um, the geometric idea of the projection is, here's your V vector, here's your A vector. Now, you take the A vector, and you come back at a perpendicular to the V vector, you have this dotted white projection line making a right angle with the V vector, and from here to here is your vector projection, which we write projection with an arrow over the top of it, subscript V, A in parentheses. And that's a projection of the argument, which is in parentheses. It's a projection of A. The V is down here to show what you're projecting on. So it's a projection of A on V, or you could say it's the projection on V of A. It means the same thing. As long as you have the on in front of the V and the of in front of the A, you've got it right. And if there's a question about that terminology. I certainly understand that. Um, then you also have this component of the A vector. Because uh, these are the components of the A vector. If uh, this is one component, then from the, if this component is at the same initial point, if this component, if this projection vector and A share the same initial point, then from the terminal point of the projection out to the terminal point of A, it's going to be perpendicular. Now, we can see that from a sketch here. Um, this is going to coincide with the dotted line. It's going to move along the dotted line, which is perpendicular to V. Okay. I could say more, but we'll leave it at that. Uh, you can convince yourself that these are going to be perpendicular.
and that is clear just from the trial. Okay, so the point I want to make though is that, okay, since this vector and this vector add up to A, then A is equal, I mean then this vector is equal to A minus this vector. Okay, if this plus this equals this, then this equals this minus this. And here's a picture of that. Here's the A, here's the negative of the projection, and here's what you get if you add A to the negative projection. It's like this, and also like this. Now it's not a very well drawn picture, and the angles don't really correspond to the angles that we have up here, but there's the picture. So again, the two components of the projection vector, of the A acceleration vector, the component parallel to the velocity is the projection of A on V, the component perpendicular to the velocity, the one that changes your direction, this is the one that speeds you up or slow you down, this is in the, uh, this changes your direction, this is A minus the projection of V on A. Um, so we define A parallel to be the projection of A on V. We define A perpendicular to be A minus A parallel. This vector and this vector add up to the acceleration vector, and this vector is parallel to V, and this vector is perpendicular to V. And that's all really here in this triangle. Now, that's great. How do you go about calculating the projection vector? Now, everybody's seen it. And I don't, I don't think I really gave a very good explanation here, but I'll probably uh, go through it. But I'll do that in a separate video uh, in case I decide that my explanation is so bad that I just need to erase all this and redo it. Okay, so we'll come back in a minute.